Here you need me to rub. Hi guys. Well, it was a gorgeous Monday morning here in the end times in paradise and doomsday trailer, but I guess the storm is blowing in here on uh, Monday, February 12th, 2024, which might or might not be President's Day. Is today President's Day? Well, we're going to pretend like it is because... Uh, Day, of course, is when we uh, do the roundup on our former and soon-to-be future president, Mr. Donald Trump, as we bring together our weekly Dump the Trump the Hive roundup rant here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. And uh, I didn't have time for a couple last week, so... Uh, we're just going to start off with what I plan to finish last week. A quote from the elder statesman Donald Trump himself. Quote, I have steel people, steel people I think, you know, very strong people. I have steel people that every time they see me, they start to cry. Yes, the truest words Donald Trump has ever spoken. Every time that people see me, they start to cry. Cannot understand why. Uh, now, now, this one I also just couldn't fit in last week. Did, did you hear about this weird shit that actor John Voigt posted? Uh, Donald Trump shares John Voight's Destroyed as Jesus video, and people say, what the fuck? Yes, Donald Trump shared a post on his Truth Social platform in which Academy Award winner John Voight declared the former president had been ridiculed and destroyed as Jesus. Yes, Void, a long time follower for the four times indicted Trump, claimed the Republican frontrunner, quote, has been targeted for his information that can knock down the corrupt swamp and is the only man that can destroy the negative propaganda that has been sworn into this office. Yes. <clears throat> Can he be saved with the American people who believe in God's glory? Can we save our nation from the dark cloud that has been put upon our life's dreams? Well, I thought Donald Trump was the dark cloud that has been put upon America's life dreams. Hmm. Yes! Because Joshua promised the land of hospitality and his sword of righteousness fought the battles left and right, the battles of right and wrong, believe that the man that can help this nation, the one man that was ridiculed, destroyed as Jesus, hmm, Trump can come back and save the American dream for all and make America great with the dignity, with the power of who she is. <laughs> Thank you, John Voigt. Uh, so this is a long article out of Salon magazine that, that kind of summarizes a lot of other dump the Trump the pieces. Uh, I could make the entire rant out of this. We're just going to read the, let's read the beginning and the end of it. MAGA burnout and the health risks of a second Trump term. When President Biden reportedly called Trump a sick fuck, he is correct in a way that he likely does not intend 
and one that has a much more profound meaning than some harsh truth-telling and salty talk, Trumpism, the MAGA movement, and the larger neo-fascist project, and today's right-wing and conservative movement more broadly, have had a demonstrably profound negative impact on the literal health of the American people. As Politico recently report, reported, uh, Biden's candor about calling Trump correctly a sick fuck is good and necessary, and there needs to be much more of it in public. <clears throat> but it is not just that Donald Trump is a sick fuck but what he represents and has enabled across American society is a type of collective pathology. For example, a range of experts recently told The Atlantic, Jennifer Sr., that Donald Trump's return to power will unleash an epidemic of killer stress and other negative health outcomes on a massive scale. Quote, what will happen to the American psyche if he wins again? Senior asked rhetorically, what will happen if we have to live in fight or flight mode for four more years and possibly far beyond? Our bodies are not designed to handle this chronic stress. Neuroscientists have a term for the tipping point moment when we capitulate to it. Allostatic overload, which is the clinical term for Trump derangement syndrome. Allostatic overload and the result is almost always sickness in one form of another, whether it's a mood disorder, substance abuse, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, or ulcers. <clears throat> Neuroscientist Robert Sapolsky explained how Trump and other such demagogues impact our collective health Quote, increase your blood pressure for a few minutes to evade a lion? A good thing. Increase your blood pressure every time you're in the vicinity of the alpha male, you begin to get cardiovascular disease. Yes. In the same essay in the Atlantic, Senior also highlighted how stress and an inability to think and focus would greatly worsen under a second Trump regime. Quote, another major component of our allostatic overload, notes Gloria Mark, the author of Attention Span, would be techno-stress in this case brought on by the obsessive checking of and interruptions from and passing around of news, which Trump made with destructive rapidity. Human brains are not designed to handle such a helter-skelter onslaught Effective multitasking, according to Marx, is in fact a complete myth. Yet, we are once again facing a news cycle that will shove our attention as well as our output, our nerves, our sanity through a Cuisinart. Yes, anyway, so guys, this goes on and on and on about uh, how Donald Trump will uh, probably have a higher death rate than the corona panic. Uh, ever did. 
and then of course uh, talking about the you know his attacks on health care literally uh, literally a death sentence for a lot of Americans but let's uh, we got to jump to the bottom we have a lot to cover for a majority of Americans a second Trump regime will be a re-traumatizing and life-shortening event. The American people weathered Trump's first regime and the horrors it unleashed. It is very likely, if not certain, that many of those same people will not be able to endure a second one and what will come next talking about Trump the sequel the personal is the political is a cliche because it is so true then uh, we're uh, gonna switch gears and move over to the Guardian uh, in a word, horrific, Trump's extreme anti-environment blueprint. <clears throat> Allies and advisors have hinted at a more methodical second term, driving fossil fuels production, sidelining scientists, and overturning rules. Uh, A blueprint is emerging for a second Donald Trump term that is even more extreme for the environment than his first, if you can, if there is such a thing, according to interviews with multiple Trump allies and advisors. So what they chose to do in this article was not interview a bunch of environmentalists, but you know, just go interview uh, the enemy. Uh, so this is mostly his own advisors and allies just openly declaring war on uh, the planet. Uh, in contrast to a sometimes chaotic first White House term, they outlined a far more methodical second presidency driving forward fossil fuel production, sidelining mainstream climate scientists, and overturning rules that curb uh, planet-eating emissions. Uh, this is, if you remember this guy, Myron Ebel, who headed the EPA's transition team for uh, Trump's first term. Quote, Trump will undo everything Joe Biden has done. Well, to undo everything that Joe Biden has done for the environment, that should take, uh, he won't be halfway through his first uh, bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken before he's undone everything that Joe Biden has done to save the planet. Uh, he will move more quickly and go further than he did before. He will act much more expeditiously to impose his agenda. Um, the prized target for Trump's Republican allies should the well when the former president defeats Joe Biden in. November's election will be the ah, will be the Inflation Reduction Act, the landmark three hundred seventy billion dollar bill laden with support for clean energy projects and electric vehicles. Huh. Well, 
maybe I maybe I need to start softening on uh, on uh, on on Donald Trump. Huh. Well. Huh. He would, his allies say, also scrap government considerations of the damage caused by carbon emissions, compel a diminished EPA to squash pollution rules for cars, trucks, and power plants, and symbolically nullify the Paris Climate Agreement by not only withdrawing the U.S. again, uh, this is Mandy Gunasakara, Trump's former EPA chief of staff, quote, the Paris Climate Accord does nothing to actually improve the environment here in the United States or globally. Uh, well, guys, I'm, 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 uh, huh, these little lefties at the Guardian, uh, I might have to, uh, start changing my tune about, about Donald Trump, gutting the, anyway, uh, let's move over. We're going to go over from the mainstream media to medium.com. This is from Patrick Metzger. A second Trump presidency would, meet, would mean the end of civilization. Huh. Well, well guys, I, I, I'm, you know... I, I, I've said all along uh, that, that, that uh, anybody who understands that global industrial civilization uh, is an immediate threat to the planet, which has to end. I, I know that Elliot Jacobson uh, is saying this all the time. And the man for the job to end global industrial civilization is Donald Trump. If we want any chance uh, of global industrial civilization ending uh, in the next four years, now Joe Biden, you know, other than, you know, starting World War III, that might do it, but, uh, you know, uh, if you are a fan of ending civilization, as Patrick Metzger says here, Donald Trump is your man. You might be looking at this headline and saying, Metzger is hyperbolizing for clicks again, but you would be wrong. I don't need to exaggerate. If human endeavor is a honey-laden hive Buzzing with productive communal activity, Donald Trump is the 10-year-old kid who the neighbors say ain't right in the head, whacking away with it at a baseball bat because A, someone told him it would make him popular, and B, he doesn't understand what a beehive is. While we can usefully apply this metaphor to almost anything at which the ex and future president has tried his hand from casino operations huh, to international relations, it is particularly true about the climate crisis. And uh, Patrick spends most of the rest of his article talking about uh, you know, Donald Trump's total ignorance and, and just absolutely uh, paying no attention whatsoever uh, to the, to the uh, climate crisis. Uh, then he gets in 
to uh, Project 25. Uh, Project 25, which he calls a vast, batshit crazy agglomeration of ignorance, fabrication, rage, bigotry, bigotry, resentment, and paranoia, a Trumpian document, if ever there ever was one. Uh, but then, of course, uh-oh, here we go again. The, you know, this is Project 25, proposes the dismantling of the Inflation Reduction Act, the strongest climate legislation ever enacted in the U.S., and, and it probably is the strongest climate uh, legislation ever enacted in the U.S., is the sad thing about it. Uh, I don't know if this is actually uh, a direct quote from Project 25 or not. I think so. This is a direct quote. Support repeal of massive spending bills like the Inflation Reduction Act, which established new programs and providing hundreds of billions of dollars in subsidies to renewable energy developers, their investors, and special interests, uh, and support the rescinding of all funds not already spent by these programs. So once again, I, I, I just like in the Guardian article, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to go from this rant over to Collapse Chronicles for my Good News Monday uh, roundup. So it sounds like that I am going to have to include uh, this article from The Guardian and from Patrick Metzger uh, that maybe that uh, planet-killing uh, bright green lie bullshit called the Inflation Reduction Act what is it? At three hundred and fifty million dollars in subsidies for concrete makers. So is it concrete or asphalt? Maybe it's concrete and asphalt. Anyway, uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of subsidies, so we can uh, have more. Uh, more uh, concrete and asphalt poured in this country to save this planet. Uh, anyway, there you go. All right, but two more bloggers are over here on medium.com what is what is martin edick writing about this week the crack up a vast conspiracy of unprecedented dimension or maybe he's just losing it there you go my favorite prediction for the 2024 election is the crack up where we watch Donald Trump disintegrate into a babbling mass of paranoia and victimhood. It's looking more and more like that every day. He is already claimed to be the biggest victim in American history, surpassing Abraham Lincoln, who, by the way, was assassinated by his enemies in public and who lived through watching half the country leave the Union. Yet, things are far worse for Mr. Trump. Uh, then there is the Taylor Swift thing, which started when she was named Person of the Year by Time Magazine, an honor Trump always thinks should be his, because who else can be Person of the Year ever? 
as the knuckle draggers on Fox, Newsmax, and all those other media meatheads rank on Taylor, blah, blah, blah. He, Trump claims to be more popular than Taylor Swift. Polling shows 50% of all Americans are Swift fans, if not diehard Swifties. Yes. Uh, the crack up of Trump is a real thing, and it's really no wonder anyone would bend under the strain of maintaining his home built mythology egotism on the grandest scale. The f <clears throat> then he goes through all his legal fees. Uh, he can't give up on running for president because then he would be a loser again. And he can't give up because of his last desperate grab at a get-out-of-jail-free card and his fantasy of pardoning himself after the elections. There are a lot of fantasies packed into that man, and they ooze out in the strangest ways and places often garbling his speech into a weird mishmash of whatever passes for thinking in Trump land. We're barely into February and that mishmash is getting more and more bizarre. A kind of Tourette's syndrome of paranoia. It's not hard to wonder how he sleeps at night. I don't think Donald Trump does sleep at night. The internal dialogue must be terrifying. What if I run out of money? What if I go to jail? What if I don't win? What if Taylor Swift is elected president? Yes. I try to avoid going off on unhinged rants like this one. But scanning the news each morning, I'm seeing more and more indicators that, what, that we may be watching a man disintegrate in front of our eyes, not just a man, an ex and future president. That's no joke. This has a distinct possibility of becoming real, an actual madman in the race for the most powerful position on the planet. <clears throat> When you consider what Biden is dealing with right now, it becomes a matter of life and death that Donald Trump be stopped and shuffled off to somewhere quiet with cushioned walls and a daily handful of pills. <clears throat> His own sanity aside, the really scary thing about all of this if my dog would stop moving the computer. What is the really scary thing about all of this? Damn it, dog. Um, is that one of our two political parties has bought into this man's ego trip, lock, stock, and barrel, and they are joined by millions of Americans. It feels like some kind of mass hypnosis, not unlike Jim Jones and his Kool-Aid swizzling death wish cult. Remember them? They all died because he told them to. If this continues through the coming year, and there is no sign that it won't, a lot of us are going to be desperate for something resembling normal politics which is weird enough as it is, wouldn't it be nice if we did not have to see Trump's mug sneering and glaring at the cameras every morning with our coffee or those weasels on Fox commiserating about Taylor Swift? One can dream, but uh, 
I'm gonna, I, I wound up last week with Richard Lowenthal, so I'm not gonna read Richard's uh, new edition to the Dump the Trump Big Files. I'll read a little bit of it. Donald Trump is a dangerous serial abuser and con man. Why can't we see that? He abuses women, the legal system, our morality, our semi-democracy, and his followers. Yet millions of us love him. Why? Today I will focus more on the American people and the deep character flaws, neediness, and emotional pain our love for Donald Trump reveals. It is an ugly and sad portrait. At first, the man himself. Amazingly, most of our current utterly bizarre political situation can be traced directly back to the disastrous influence of one very malicious and abusive man, Donald Trump. Our actual, factual national trajectory over the past eight years shows conclusively that our societal systems, legal, moral, media, and political, simply cannot cope with a totally amoral, vengeful uh, and pathological liar like Trump. In essence, Donald Trump is a ruthless mob boss, a loudmouth brat, a sexual predator, the world's worst ever sore loser, and a vicious serial abuser as well. And, there, and this goes on and on, and then he goes from uh, there into the bigger picture, uh, which I don't get into as much on this rant, and that is what, you, 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 you know, it's, it's that, that Donald Trump, the, the old saw, that, that Donald Trump is just a, a reflection of, uh, a, 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 of what is happening. Uh, it, it is always back to the fact that one human being would, 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 would vote for this motherfucker. The, this just, uh, just offensive. Uh, I mean, politics aside, uh, it is about the man himself, at least this rant is. It, 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 it's about the man himself, the, the mystery uh, of why anybody uh, as brainless as a dead chicken would vote for Donald Trump. Uh, it, it, it's just, it, 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 anyway, I, I can't stand it, but, uh, I'm, we're going to try to make some lemon out of, some lemonade out of these lemons, so maybe, just maybe, we can get out of the goddamn Paris, uh, Climate Agreement and dismantle the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, and, and, and save... Uh, Americans about $350 million of subsidies for asphalt and concrete makers to save the planet. Anyway, so I got to change hats. I have to change hats and uh, go over to the uh, the Good News Monday round up while I can find some good news on the planet to round up. Bye guys. Little log.
I need to change hats and come back to some good news. Bye, guys.